Jai Shri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Nityananda Shri Advaita Gadadhar Shri Vasari Gaur Bhakta Binda Hare Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Rama Hare Rama 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 Hare Hare So we read from Chaitanya Bhagavad Anchalila Chapter 4, The Description of Sri Achyutananda's Pastimes and the Worship on Sri Madhavendra Titi. This is the Chaitanya Bhagavat of Vrindavan Das Thakur. Umaginati marandasya knagna salakaya chakshun nilatam yena tasmai shi gurave namaha I was born in the darkness of ignorance, and my spiritual masters opened my eyes with the torchlight of knowledge. I offer my most humble, respectful obeisances to the lotus feet of my spiritual master. J.C. Bhaktivedanta Swami Prabhupada, founder Acharya of the International Society for Krishna Consciousness. Okay, chapter four. Glory, glory to he who is an ocean of mercy. Glory to Lord Chaitanya. Glory, glory to he whose feet contain all auspiciousness. Glory, glory to Sri Krishna Chaitanya, the king of sannyasis. Glory, glory to Lord Chaitanya's devotees. After delivering everyone, accompanied by his devotees, Lord Chaitanya set out for Mathura. He walked on the path by the Ganga's bank. By bathing and drinking, he fulfilled Goddess Ganga's desire. Near Goda, by the Goda's shore, was a village named Brahmakali, a village of Brahmins. The Lord went to that holy place. After four or five days, no one knew he was there. How long can the sun remain hidden? Soon everyone heard the Lord Chaitanya had come there. With happy hearts, everyone, including women, children, elders, pious and impious, came to see him. The Lord was always wrapped in ecstasy. Nothing but pure devotion and ecstatic love pleased him. He roared, thundered, trembled and wept. The hairs of his body stood erect. Again and again he stumbled and fell. Again and again he performed kirtan with the devotees. Not for a moment did he perform even half a sesame seed's worth of any other activity. The Lord very loudly wept. For two miles on the path, the people heard him weeping. Even though they did not understand the nectar of ecstatic devotional service, everyone felt happy when they saw the Lord. From afar, everyone offered dandabad obeisances. Gathering together, they loudly sang, Hari, Hari. Hearing the people chant the holy names of Lord Hari, Lord Chaitanya became very happy. Chant, 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 the Lord said. Raising his arms, everyone happily chanted louder. Lord Chaitanya manifested so much bliss that even the Muslims, what to speak of the others, all chanted. Even the Muslims offered dandabad obeisances from afar. Lord Chaitanya manifested great mercy. Lord Chaitanya always performed sankirtan. He did not do even a half a sesame seed's worth of any other activity. From the four directions, the people came to see, gazing at the Lord who did not feel his heart to run to him. Gathering together, people chanted the holy names of Lord Hari. In the four directions, no one could hear any other sound. The Muslim king's court was nearby, Still, fear did not take birth in anyone's heart. Forgetting all sufferings, sorrows, homes, duties, everyone fearlessly chanted Hari. A policeman went to the Muslim king and said, A sannyasi has come to Ramkeli Gram. He always does kirtan, glorifying some ghost. How many people have come to meet him, I do not know. 
The king said, What is this sannyasi like? Tell me. Tell, what does he eat? What's his name? What is the shape of his body? The policeman said, Listen, listen, my lord. This is a wonder I have never seen or heard before. A sannyasi is very handsome to see. He's equal to Kamadev himself. I do not have the power to describe him. He conquers the splendor of gold. He's very tall. His arms reach to his knees. His navel is very deep. He has a lion's neck and elephant's shoulders and lotus eyes. Millions of moons do not equal his face. His lips are gloriously red. His teeth defeat pearls. His knitted eyebrows are like the archer Kamadev's bows. His handsome broad chest is anointed with sandal paste. A saffron garment graces his broad hips. His feet are like red lotuses. His ten toenails glisten like ten mirrors. He must have been the king of some country or the son of some king. He must have attained spiritual knowledge and accepted sannyas, and now he travels from place to place. His every limb is soft like butter. Now, please hear this wonder. He violently falls to the ground. In half an hour, he falls hundreds and hundreds of times. His fall breaks stones, but still his body is not broken. The hairs on the sannyasi's body always stand erect. In this way, his limbs look like panasa fruits. Moment after moment, the sannyasi trembles. A hundred men have no power to hold him still. Tears flowing from his two eyes are a wonder to see. His tears flow like how many rivers? I have no power to say. Sometimes the sannyasi loudly laughs. Even after six hours, he does not stop. Sometimes, after listening to the kirtan, he falls unconscious, and no one can revive him. Everyone becomes frightened. Again and again, he raises his arms and chants the names of Lord Hari. He has no desire to eat, sleep, or do anything else. From the four directions, people come to see him. No heart there wishes to go home. How many sannyasis, yogis, philosophers have I seen? And I have never seen or heard of any wonderful person like him. O oh, great king, I say that this person's arrival makes your country glorious and fortunate. No one eats, no one sleeps, no one talks. At every moment, everyone enjoys only pastimes of Sankirtan. Although he was naturally very passionate and ferocious, when he heard these words, the Muslim king felt great wonder in his heart. The wonderstruck king called for Keshava Khan and asked him, Keshava Khan, what's your opinion of the person named Sri Krishna Chaitanya? Tell me. What is the talk about him? What kind of man is he? What kind of sannyasi? You must tell me. From the four directions, people come to see him. Why do they come? Please, say what you think. Hearing these words, saintly Keshava Khan became afraid. Hiding his true opinion, he said, Who says he's a great Goswami? He's just a sannyasi beggar. He's a poor man from another country. He lives under a tree. Then the king said, Don't call him a poor man. It's a great offense to hear those words with the ear. Everyone should know without a doubt that he's the same person the Hindus call Krishna and the Muslims call Koda. In my kingdom, everyone follows my order, but in every kingdom, everyone places this person's order on his head. In my own kingdom, how many enemies try to stop me? If this person were not the Supreme Personality of Godhead, why would these people from every country worship him with their bodies, words, and thoughts? If for six months I did not pay them, every one of my servants would make many complaints against me. These people arrange for their own eating, and then they serve him. Who does not gaze on him with a loving heart? Therefore, please know, he is the Supreme Personality of Godhead. That's the truth. Please don't say that he's a poor person. The king said, This I say to everyone. If anyone, be he a kazi, a policeman, or anyone, makes trouble for this sannyasi, I'll personally take away the troublemaker's life. The sannyasi may go wherever he likes. He may preach whatever he likes from his own scripture. He may happily perform kirtan with all the people. He may do whatever is in his heart. After giving the order, the king retired to the inner rooms of his palace. Thus, Lord Chaitanya was able to continue his pastimes. The Muslim king was Hussein Shah, who broke many deities and temples throughout Orissa. Even that Muslim king honored Lord Chaitanya. 
Therefore, only a blind person will not honor Lord Chaitanya. Though they may shave their heads and wear sannyasi garments, these blind people burn in their hearts when they hear Lord Chaitanya's glories. Anyone who's not happy to hear Lord Chaitanya's glories, glories that fill the numberless universes, glories that crush ignorance into powder, glories that make Lakshmi, Shiva, Brahman, and Nantashesh wild with happiness, glories that the four Vedas always sing, finds that his virtues will become false. If he remembers Lord Chaitanya's feet, even a person with no virtues will go to Vaikuntha. Oh, my brothers, listen. Please, please listen to these pastimes of Anchikand, pastimes where Lord Krishna performed Sankirtan. Hearing these truthful words from the king, the saintly people became happy. Meeting in secretly, meeting in secret, the saintly devotees discussed the situation, saying, The king is a ferocious Muslim. He's always agitated by the mode of ignorance. In Orissa, how many millions and millions of deities and temples did he wildly break? By divine arrangement, the mode of goodness is now born in his heart. That's why he now speaks good words to us. But if someone comes and gives him bad advice, he may again become wicked and ferocious. Aware of the situation, we should tell the sannyasi, Lord, why did you come to this place? We should send a letter that says, why should you stay in a village so close to this king? Everyone agreed to the plan. A good Brahmin secretly carried the letter. Tasting the nectar of ecstatic love, always wild with bliss, Lord Chaitanya roared and thundered again and again, gathering together thousands and millions of people, saying Lord Hari's holy names. In their midst, Lord Chaitanya, the jewel of sannyasis, joyfully danced. Not for a moment did anyone say or do anything. Night and day, everyone performed sankirtan. Seeing this, the Brahmin became filled with wonder. There was no opportunity to deliver the letter. Lord Chaitanya would not speak even to his close associates. Why should he speak to others? Was it day? Was it night? Was he among friends, strangers? Was he in water? Was he on land? Was he in a village? Lord Chaitanya did not know. By tasting the nectar of devotion to a person, who was actually his own self, he'd become wild. Day and night he swam in an ocean of love for a person who was actually his own self. Not finding an opportunity to speak to the Lord, the Brahmin spoke to the devotees. <clears throat> <clears throat> the Brahmin said, You're all close associates of the Lord. When you find the opportunity, please tell the Lord this message. Why should you stay in a village so close to the king? All of you, please tell him this message. After speaking these words and after offering millions of dandabad obeisances to the Lord, the Brahmin left and returned to his home. <coughs> Hearing these words, the Lord's associates began to worry in their hearts. Still, they could not find an opportunity to tell the Lord. Lord Chaitanya did not manifest did not manifest external consciousness. <clears throat> Raising his two arms, all he would say was, <coughs> chant, 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 Hari, chant, Hari. In the four directions, millions and millions of people clapped their hands and joyfully chanted Hari. The Supreme Personality of Godhead, the remembrance of those servants' names breaks the bonds of repeated birth and death and throws all obstacles far away, whose potency enables the individual souls to move and act, whom the Vedas describe as the eternal and pure Supreme Brahman, whose maya makes conditioned souls forget him, has now descended to the earth to deliver the conditioned souls from the bondage of repeated birth and death by allowing them to taste the nectar of pure devotional service. Who is the king that has the right to rule over him? Whom he need to fear? The Vedas affirm death, time, and their companions are all his servants. 
by his own wish, supremely independent Lord Chaitanya, the crest jewel of all persons, performed Sankirtan with all the people. If they should be afraid of anyone, the people should be afraid of Lord Chaitanya. Still, they were not afraid. From the four directions they came to see him. Lord Chaitanya gave spiritual bliss to everyone. They were not afraid of the king. Although the people were not learned in spiritual matters, when they saw Lord Chaitanya, spiritual bliss was suddenly born in their bodies. Even Yamaraj, the king of death, did not frighten them. Why would they be afraid of some king? Again and again, everyone chanted the names of Lord Hari. No other sound was heard in anyone's mouth. Surrounded by everyone, the king of Vaikuntha performed Sankirtan in this way. A slight worry then entered the hearts of the Lord's associates. Lord Chaitanya, the super soul in the hearts of all, became aware of it. Slightly smiling, the Lord came to external consciousness. Breaking the illusion of his devotees, the Lord spoke. The Lord said, Why are you afraid of the king who will come to see me? Anyone who comes to see me, I will see, but not everyone will come see to see me. Why are you afraid at heart? What can the king say that will force me to go and see him? What power has the king to order me? Only if I place the words in his mouth will this king say that he wishes to see me. What power has he to see me without my will? The Vedas search for me, but they do not see me. The Devarshis, Rajarshis, Siddhas, Puranas, and Mahabharata search for me, but they do not see me. To begin the Sankirtan movement, I have descended to this world. I will deliver the whole fallen world. My heart does not care whether the people are Yavanas or demons. In the Kali Yuga, everyone will chant my names. I will deliver the untouchables, the demons, the yavanas, the outcasts, the women, the sudras, everyone else. In this yuga, I will give to everyone the devotional service that the demigods, sages, and siddhas yearn to attain. By persons intoxicated by learning, wealth, persons intoxicated by learning, wealth, aristocratic family, knowledge, and austerity will not become my devotees. They commit offenses. In this yuga, these people are cheated that do not understand my transcendental pastimes. In every village and country on this earth, my name will be preached. I've come to this earth, but still the people do not search to find me. Why would this king come to see me? These words are all false. This I tell you all. Manifesting external consciousness, Lord Chaitanya spoke these words. Hearing them, the devotees became happy. Staying for some days in that village, Lord Chaitanya fearlessly performed the Sankirtan of chanting his own holy names. Who has the power to know the Lord, Supreme Lord's desire? He did not go to Mathura. He turned and went back. He told his devotees, I will go to Lord Jagannath, the moon of Nilachala. Saying these words, he supremely blissful and independent Lord, continuing his pastimes in Sankirtan, went south. He joyfully continued on the path by the Ganga's bank, and some days he came to Advaita's home. Seeing his son's glory, Advaita turned from his other duties and became wrapped in bliss. At that time, Lord Chaitanya came to Advaita's home. Please happily listen, and I will tell you the very wonderful story of why Advaita was wrapped in bliss in his son's company. Advaita had a worthy son, who in this world was known by the name Achutananda. One day, by divine arrangement, an exalted sannyasi came to Advaita Charya's home. Seeing this sannyasi, Advaita became very humble. First he bowed down, and he offered the sannyasi a sitting place. Advaita said, Goswami, please accept alms. The sannyasi said, You may offer alms, but first I wish to ask a question of you. The alms I ask is that you answer my question. Advaitachari said, Please accept a meal first. Later you may ask questions and we will talk. Sannyasi said, First, I will ask my question. Advaitachari said, Ask me whatever you like. Sannyasi said, Who is Keshava Bharati to Lord Chaitanya? Please tell me that. In his heart, Lord Advaita thought, There are two sides. 
material and spiritual. Although he has neither father nor mother, the Supreme Personality of God, it is still called Devaki Nandana, the son of Devaki. Although from the spiritual point of view, no one can be Lord Chaitanya's guru, still everyone says he has a guru. Why should I begin by talking from the spiritual point of view? First, I will speak in ordinary and material terms. Thinking in this way, Lord Advaita said, Keshava Bharati is Lord Chaitanya's guru. You have seen that Keshava Bharati is his guru. Why do you ask this question of me? The moment Advaita spoke these words, Chutananda ran into the room. He was a charming five-year-old boy. His limbs, closed only by the four directions, were covered with dust from his childhood playing. His every limb was handsome. He was like Kartikeya. He knew everything. He was very devoted. He held all the power of pure devotional service. Hearing the words, Lord Chaitanya's guru, Chudananda laughed and laughed. Filled with anger, he said, Father, what are you saying? Say again what you think. You think Lord Chaitanya has a guru? How can you dare to place such words on your tongue? I do not know the reason. If you place words like those on your tongue, then I think Kali Yuga certainly come. Or perhaps Lord Chaitanya's Maya potency, which bewilders Brahma, Shiva, and the demigods, has also bewildered you. I think Lord Shiva's Maya potency bewilders you. Who has the power to cross over Lord Chaitanya's Maya? If you're not bewildered by Maya, then why do you say Lord Chaitanya has a guru? By Lord Chaitanya's wish, the numberless universes enter the pores of Lord Chaitanya's body. Lord Chaitanya enjoys pastimes on the water. He plays alone. Nothing different from him exists. Many proud sages do not even know who, where they are. By Lord Chaitanya's inconceivable will, Brahma was playfully born from Lord Chaitanya's lotus navel. At that moment, Brahma had no power even to see where he was. At the end, Brahma worshipped Lord Chaitanya with unalloyed devotion. Pleased by Brahma's devotion, Lord Chaitanya taught him the truth. Placing Lord Chaitanya's order on his head, Brahma then created the universe and taught everyone what he had learned. Shanaka and the other sages learned that knowledge from Brahma and mercifully taught it to the whole world. In this way, knowledge was passed down. Why then do you say that Lord Chaitanya has a guru? You're my father. You're my shiksha guru. How will I learn the truth from you? Why did you say all those false things? After speaking these words, Achyutananda became silent. Hearing his words, Advaita became filled with bliss, saying, Son, son, Advaita embraced Achyutananda. With tears of love, he sprinkled Achyutananda's limbs. He said, You are my father. I am your son. Pretending to be my son, you've come here to teach me. Father, please forgive my offenses against you. Never again will I talk as I did. This I promise you. Hearing himself praise, Saint Achyutananda became embarrassed. He would not lift his head. Hearing Achyutananda's words, the sannyasi at once offered Dandabad obeisances. The sannyasi said, Advaita's son is worthy. As the father is, so is the son. His words are beyond the knowledge of ordinary human beings. The power of the Supreme Personality of Godhead rests in Achyutananda. It cannot be otherwise. How can such words come from the mouth of a child? The moment when I came to see Advaita is auspicious. With my own eyes, I have seen very wonderful glory. After offering respectful obeisances to Advaita and his son, the sannyasi departed chanting, Hari, Hari. That is why I say Advaita's son was worthy. His only shelter was Lord Chaitanya's feet. If someone worships Advaita but rejects Lord Chaitanya, then even if he be Advaita's own son, he must go. Seeing his son's glory, Advaita Chari abandoned all duties, embraced his son, and wept. He took the dust from his son's limbs and happily smeared it on his own body, saying, Lord Chaitanya's own associate is born in my home. Lord Advaita clapped his hands and danced. Embracing his son, Lord Advaita danced. No one in the three worlds can know the heights of devotion. Seeing his son's glory, Advaita was overcome. At that moment, everything was very auspicious. Accompanied by his associates, Lord Chaitanya came to Advaita's home at that moment. Seeing his worshipful deity, the master of his life, Advaita fell to the ground and offered Dandabhat obeisances. 
Advaita roared, Hari, overcome with bliss, he forgot his own body. The women chanted, Jai, Jai, and great bliss arose in Advaita's home. Lord Chaitanya embraced Advaita to his chest. He sprinkled Advaita's limbs with tears of ecstatic love. Holding Lord Chaitanya's feet to his chest, Advaita wept. He was not in external consciousness. In the four directions, the devotees wept. How wonderful was the love they felt. I do not have the power to describe it. After some moments becoming peaceful, Advaita humbly offered Lord Chaitanya an asana. Lord Chaitanya sat on the glorious asana. In the four directions were the glorious devotees. Nichinanda and Advaita embraced. Gazing at each other, they became happy at heart. The devotees offered obeisances to Advaita Charya. With great love, Advaita Charya embraced them all. Except for Veda Vyasa himself, who has the power to describe the bliss that was born in Advaita's home? In a moment, Advaita's small son Achyutananda offered obeisances to Lord Chaitanya's feet. Embracing him, Lord Chaitanya covered Achyutananda's body with tears of love. Lord Chaitanya would not let Achyutananda leave his chest. Achyutananda clung to the Lord's body. Seeing the Lord's mercy to Advaita to Achyutananda, the devotees wept with love. Of all the Lord's associates, none <clears throat> none was more dear than Achyutananda. No one was like him. For Nichinanda and Sarup Damodar, he was as dear as life. He was the foremost disciple of Gradhar Pandit. Therefore I say that Achyutananda was a worthy son of Advaita. As the father was, so was the son. It was right that they were together. In this way, accompanied by Lord Advaita's associates, Lord Chaitanya plunged in the nectar of spiritual bliss. By Advaita's wish, Lord Chaitanya stayed for some days and enjoyed pastimes of Sankirtan in Advaita's home. Overcome with bliss by the Lord of his life's presence in his home, Lord Advaita Acharya did not know where he was. When noble-hearted Advaita became a little peaceful, he sent a messenger running to Mother Sachi. Taking with him a palakin, the messenger quickly went to Navadweep and told Mother Sachi the message. Mother Sachi was plunged in an o nectar ocean of ecstatic love. What did she say? What did she hear? She was not in external consciousness. When she saw anyone before her, she would say, Please tell me the news from Mathura. How are Krishna and Balaram in Mathura? What is that sinner Kamsa doing now? What is the news of Akura, the thief who stole my Krishna and Balaram? Please tell me. I heard that that sinner Kamsa died. Is it true that Ugrasena is now king? Sometimes Mother Sachi would call out, Krishna, Balaram, quickly milk the cows. I will go to sell the milk. Sometimes Mother Sachi would grab a stick and say, Grab him, grab him, everyone, the butter thief, please. Where will you run now? Now I will tie you up. Speaking these words, Mother Sachi, now wrapped in ecstasy, would run here and there. Seeing a woman come before her, she would cry, Come, let us go to the Amuna and take our baths. Sometimes she would loudly weep. Hearing her weep, any heart would melt. An unbroken stream of tears flowed from her two eyes. Hearing her emotional lament, even stones and dry sticks would split apart. <coughs> Sometimes Lord Krishna would appear in her meditation. Forgetting who she was, then she would very loudly laugh and laugh. The laughter was very blissful and wonderful. Even after six hours, it did not end. Sometimes Mother Sachi would faint in ecstasy. For three hours, there was no sign of life in her body. Sometimes she trembled. Again and again, someone picked her up. Again and again, she fell to the ground. Who has ecstatic love for Lord Krishna like Mother Sachi? No one is like her. Devotion to Krishna resides in Lord Krishna's transcendental body. It was Lord Krishna himself who gave the power of devotion to Mother Sachi. Who has the power to describe devotional ecstasies Mother Sachi felt? Day and night, Mother Sachi very happily swam in the waves of the ocean of ecstatic love. Whenever she was slightly in external consciousness, Mother Sachi would worship her deity of Lord Vishnu. Please know for certain. When Mother Sachi had thus sat down to worship Lord Krishna, 
the messenger came with the good news. He said, Lord Chaitanya has come to Shantipur. Mother, come quickly and see him. Hearing this news, Mother Sachi became very happy. Then the messenger went to tell the others. When the devotees heard this news of the Lord, their hearts became filled with great joy and love. Taking Mother Sachi with him, the Lord's dear devotee, Gangadas Pandit, at once departed. Marari Gupta and the other devotees all accompanied Mother Sachi. Mother Sachi quickly came to Shantipur, and Lord Chaitanya heard this news. Seeing his mother from afar, Lord Chaitanya at once offered Dandabad obeisances. Again and again he circumambulated her and offered Dandabad obeisances. Again and again he recited prayers. He said, I say you are the mother of the universe. You are pure devotional service personified. Your form is spiritual beyond the modes of material nature. If you cast a merciful glance on them, the conditioned souls find their hearts have fallen in love with Lord Krishna. You are pure personified pure devotion to Lord Vishnu. From you everything has come. You are Lord Vishnu's potency.